Mr. Beat presents Presidential Elections, elections in American, American History. history. <laughs> the 12th presidential election in American history took place from Friday, November 2nd to Wednesday, December 5th, 1832. President Andrew Jackson, seeking re-election of course, was very popular during his first term. While not so popular with his vice president, John Calhoun, who would resign shortly after the election over differences relating to tariffs that hurt his home state of South Carolina and several other personal reasons. Well before this, Jackson knew he had to find a new vice president to run for re-election with him, and the Democratic Party chose the dude who pretty much built the Democratic Party, Martin Van Buren. Sure, Jackson was popular with most of the people, but many in Congress disagreed with him on issues like his support for Indian removal, the spoils system, and getting rid of the Electoral College. The biggest issue in 1832 seemed to revolve around the renewing of the charter of the Second Bank of the United States. Congress passed it. Jackson, not a fan of central banking and paper money in general, vetoed the renewal of the bank's charter, withdrew federal deposits from the bank, and redistributed them to private banks throughout the country. Jackson had a habit of vetoing a lot of legislation Congress passed, actually. Needless to say, opponents of Jackson's aggressive use of veto power called him King Andrew. They argued that not renewing the National Bank would have devastating effects on the American economy. But Jackson convinced many ordinary Americans that by being against the National Bank, he was just defending them against the privileged elite who wanted to keep the power to themselves. Jackson's opponents were led by, you guessed it, Henry Clay. Clay accepted the nomination to run against Jackson for the newly formed National Republican Party. Another name for that party could have been, quote, the people who hate Andrew Jackson party. John Sargent from Pennsylvania was Clay's running mate this time. This was the first presidential election in American history in which a notable third party had a candidate on the ticket. The anti-Masonic party was created to oppose the Freemasons who they perceived as corrupt and elitist. That sounds familiar. They called out both Clay and Jackson as being associated with Freemasonry. The party held the first national nominating convention in American history. Many wanted Richard Rush as their nominee, but he declined. John Quincy Adams was interested, but many party leaders thought the former president was just too unpopular. The anti-Masonic party ended up choosing William Wirt as their presidential candidate, despite the fact he was a Freemason. Crazy! Amos Elmaker from Pennsylvania was his running mate. Can you tell Pennsylvania was an important state in this election? A fourth candidate, John Floyd from Virginia, was supported by the newly formed Nullifier Party, even though he didn't officially run for president. The Nullifier Party was basically a bunch of people in South Carolina upset about Jackson's support for increased tariffs that hurt the state. And here are the results. Andrew Jackson easily won re-election, receiving 219 electoral votes. He also got 54.2% of the popular vote, which is notable because no president was again able to get a majority of the popular vote in two consecutive elections until Ulysses Grant did 40 years later. Henry Clay lost yet another presidential election, coming in second place with 49 electoral votes and 37.4% of the popular vote. William Wirt received seven electoral votes and came in third place with the popular vote at 7.8%. John Floyd received all of the South Carolina's 11 electoral votes. But they didn't count the popular vote there, so uh, yeah, that was it for John. Martin Van Buren became the eighth vice president in history. Even though all of the Democratic electors from Pennsylvania voted against him and instead voted for William Wilkins, a U.S. senator from you guessed it, Pennsylvania. As crazy as it sounds, Andrew Jackson would be the last president until Abraham Lincoln to be re-elected. As much as some people hated him at the time, he remained oh so popular with most ordinary Americans. I'll see you for the next election, buddy.